Hold on on tight tight for the the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the alternative to the alternative alternative media. media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, glad you're back on the Investigative Journal. Greg Anthony here on this February 27th, 2018 day in our calendar. Today I want to talk about the top three predictive TV shows and what they tell us about the New World Order. You know, for a long time I've been covering the Vatican-led New World Order, how they have programmed uh, our society here in America through the use of the media, through the use of Hollywood, And it doesn't take uh, long to figure it out if you listen to uh, CNN on the left wing on TV or Fox News on the right wing. And if you don't have a background in how they do this or even understand what the Vatican-led New World Order is, you probably fall prey to it. And I would say 99% of the American population has been programmed as we speak. So I wanted to talk about some of these predictive TV shows that are on uh, TV right now and how Hollywood is very important to the Jesuit agenda. And I'm going to use an article written by Dave Hodges, who looked at this in depth, and I uh, want to talk about predictive uh, programming. Okay, what is it? It's a way to condition the masses to accept a, in this case, a bleak future planned by the globalists. Yeah. And the globalists have to be trained to do this, right? And who better than the Jesuit order if you know what they're all about? But many people don't. That's how they get away with it. And uh, to talk a little bit about our youngsters in our society today, most millennials or the group after millennials, what do they call them? The X group? I have no idea. Uh, they look forward to globalism. They think it's a good thing. 80% in a recent poll of young people thought, hey, the New World Order is fantastic. Everyone getting together in a great, peaceful world. But boy, have you been hoodwinked. Now, if you look at According to Hodges, uh, we looked at CNN reporter Amber Lyon, that the CIA, actually, she even admitted it, pays the CN- pays CNN to run certain stories while burying others in an attempt to create an artificial reality. Oh, boy, do they bury the Jesuit agenda, right? Now, American television is dominated, uh, says Hodges, with globalist themes designed to desensitize the Americans, and especially the youth, to a new and emerging reality. This practice of theme-based propaganda permeates Hollywood. And, folks, all you got to do is start, what do you think The Simpsons has been on for over 20 years? How many sitcoms in this country last that long if they're not there for another reason? And what they're doing in The Simpsons is kind of telling you the future through cartoons. They predicted Trump's uh, win in the presidency, what, 15 years ago. And it's incredible. The other things, they, 9-11's another one. And if you look at The Simpsons, that's what they're there for. That's why they've been on the air for over 20 years. Probably the most occult-filled movie with predictive programming was the Back to the Future series. You know, the Back to the Future movies with Michael Fox, uh, what was his name? Yeah, uh, Fox was his last name. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's talk about some of these uh, shows. But first I want to say, originally the Nazi-based propaganda technique was used in uh, with the Germans, who were conditioned, and they were an unsuspecting public at, at their movie houses, in their movie themes and news reels, to what? Hate the Jews, and to accept the inevitable World War II that Hitler would start. Today, 
This method of mass mind control, Hodges says, proposes that people are conditioned through works of fiction to accept planned future scenarios which have dramatic social, political, and economic implications. There's usually a desensitization. Desensit. <laughs> That's a tough word. They're desensitizing you. It's a strategy based on the notion that the more one sees the theme in entertainment, the more likely people will accept this reality in real life. This is the classic B.F. Skinner operant conditioning. Now, uh, Alan Watt, you've probably heard of him. He used to be on my radio show years ago. He deals in this a lot, and he defines this practice as, quote, the power of suggestion using the media of fiction to create a desired outcome. Now, interesting, isn't it? How, you know, are we aware that we're being programmed? Now, one of the first move, one of the first, one of the shows on TV that's doing this is called The Last Ship. It's a TNT original series and is one of the best examples of predictive programming. The show is filled with tales of mass genocide involving pandemics, mass vaccinations, and civil war. The threat to humanity was divided into major subject areas. One, a virus swept across the planet and killed 80% of humanity. The poisoning of the crop supply, thus creating a global famine. GMO food that elicits, elicits passive behavior. And the U.S. was broken up in kind of the Cal Exit style. So really, what did I say, you know, years ago? I remember talking to people when I would live in Italy when they were using the strategy of tension there to test out terrorism and all these false flag events that you're seeing going on in the world today, especially in America. Isn't it interesting that there's only school sh I never hear of school shootings in many other countries. Why here? Because they're staged, plain and simple. But most people believe they're real. And when people start investigating and find out that perhaps the people that were killed in the, uh, the kids that were supposedly killed in Florida recently weren't even born. <laughs> Think about that one. Check it out. But people won't believe it anyway. Programmed to believe anything that comes out of the mouth of these pol stupid politicians and anything that comes out of the mouth of the Pope in Rome and all of his followers. Now, you can get a video on this. Just go and uh, go the predictive programming of the last ship, that movie. And you know how many millions of people watch it? Okay, let's go to a second movie. But first, uh, let me tell you this. I you got several sponsors on my show. And I have to tell you that let's take out a minute here to talk about hemp oils from a company called CTFO. Now, hemp oils are great for your health, and you can get them now uh, at CTFO. It's a great company represented here by the Investigative Journal. And I, if you want to buy them, you go to CBD Healthy Living Products dot my CTFO CBD dot com. Then you can buy them right from me here and get a nice discount. And they're great products, hemp oil products, can help you if you're ailing in many uh, different ways. For example, if you have stomach problems, if you f perhaps have anxiety, if you're suffering from fibromyalgia, other things, try hemp oils. It's uh, really an amazing products that really help you. They come in little bottles and you put little drops under your tongue and... Go to the website and buy those products, really. I support them. It's a company called CTFO, a website that I have there. You can buy them right from me. If not, contact me at gregbeacon at gmail.com and get on this craze. It's not a craze, but it's a, you know, the cannabis medical marijuana now is being known all over the country as helping people get around, you know, big pharma, get around all of these big companies. 
that, uh, you know, the FDA and everything that's trying to get you sick and then get you on their expensive medication. So spend a little bit of money on CBD. I've checked out these products, and this is a company I recommend, CTFO. Contact me at gregbeacon at gmail.com or call me at 619-375-1228. Now, it's legal in all states, as well as Mexico and Canada, and 40 or 50 other countries. So, contact me. All right, uh, back to a designated survivor. The second show I want to talk about, since we're talking about Hollywood and predictive programming, this is a beauty. And uh, this one, at the time of the State of the Union, this is a political show. Uh, former professor and soon-to-be fired HUD secretary, so he's a low-level cabinet, well, a cabinet member, Tom Kirkman, is chosen as the designated survivor. This means that the individual chosen is a cabinet-level administrator and this one lived, held in isolation in case they're held in isolation of an attack that kills everyone else in government, including the president and the vice president and the speaker of the house, etc. Which is exactly what happens on the show. Are they telling you something? Tom Kirkman becomes president. And every globalist issue from presidential assassination to traitorous deep state that's going on now in Washington, do you hear about that? It's really right there for you if you listen to what's going on in Washington today. And what better way than to give you what they're going to do in the future right here on TV, but they're doing it in Washington as we speak, slowly. Yeah, just rip apart the American government and then create your one world order. Every show is a primer on globalism if you want to learn about it. In fact, speaking of globalism, says Hodges, the most current debate being held in pub full public view is the conflict between, what, nationalism and patriotism versus globalist and the New World Order. That's what's going on. The Democratic Party has turned into the globalist New World Order Party, and we have nationalism and patriotism and the, never, and the Trumpers, and all of the people who still believe in America fighting it out, and the government showing you how they're doing it every day. As an aside, did you know that the Olympics passed a rule which forbids medal winners from singing their national anthem during the, during the award ceremony? But did you watch the Russian hockey team violate the rule who won the gold medal? <laughs> well... This uh, played on an episode of Designated Survivor. Right. That's what was going on on Designated. They played it right there. Here are some clips from a particular episode. This is stunning. Let me give you something. No populism, meaning the will of the people is dead. No isolationism, meaning that empire building through wars of imperialism is preferred. The world order must continue. And all of this and more was said in a one-minute clip on Wednesday, May 10th, 2017. All right, so you got predictive programming going on. It's an incredible story. And uh, there's another movie out. Further, there's a never-present theme in this New World Order predictive programming. It's the deep state. You're hearing it on Fox News, you're hearing it on CNN, that it's all, all of a sudden that's all you hear and seeks to undermine elected officials at every turn. The ultimate in high-tech martial law. What about that? It's a show, right, called The Colony. This is an amazing one, The Colony. So what is The Colony trying to do to you? What is The Colony trying to do? There's a show presently, folks, on TV that shows us our collective futures, as predicted by former weatherman, underground weatherman, convicted felon, Bill Ayers. Well, he even said Bill Ayers launched Obama's political career as he told FBI informant Larry Grathall that 50 million Americans would die in FEMA camps. This is what they were saying, right? The parallel between this show's plot and its similarities between the martial law and the continue, you know, the continuing of government documents is stunning. 
And this production is much more than just another TV show, folks. This is telling you what they're doing, perhaps. In a dystopian, not-too-distant future, L.A., and a couple, uh, Kate and Will Bowman, live with two of their three children under a military martial law regime. Is this what we have planned for our children? Which is the most brutal martial law military occupation by an organization known as the Colony Transitional Authority. Now, why did they come up with these movies? I mean, when I grew up, there were, oh, well, The Wizard of Oz was a good predictive one. But you're seeing now, God, it's just incredible. They're telling you exactly what they're doing. This show is like martial law on steroids and enforced with extremely advanced technology. Do they have it? Wow. Do they have this advanced technology already and they're not uh, telling us? We'll have to wait and see. An ET, they had no alien invasion. An ET force called the host successfully invaded Earth. The ETs are not part of the show and should not even be in the storyline for all intents and purposes. Purposes. The show focuses on human collaborating forces of enslavement. It is said of them that no one ever sees them ETs. The hosts have built an enormous wall around 30 stories tall, several meters thick, and many miles in length which surrounds the central part of Los Angeles, where the series is set. Oh, we've heard a lot about building walls, haven't we? <laughs> now, is this what they have planned? No travel is permitted between the regions of the world called blocks. And this is one of the themes of any martial law regime, real or of Hollywood origin. Other similar walls have been constructed around other major cities, which are also called blocks. While various buildings still display severe damage from the armed conflict during the invasion known as the Arrival. <laughs> well, they have fun making these, don't they? But, you know, I wonder if these actors even understand what the hell's going on. The geographical extent of the alien invasion is unclear during this show, The Colony, but it is presumably worldwide. The accompanying forces shown to the viewers are all human and enforce their occupation via black and red uniform military police nicknamed the Red Hats. And they are armed. They got, they got, yeah, they got these red berets on with automatic weapons and travel in DHS style or, or, <laughs> armored personnel carriers. Hey, go to any American city. That's what you'll see today. And is it going to get worse? Who knows? Who knows? Okay, before we talk more about the Colony TV show and predictive programming, let me tell you about another company that's come aboard as an advertiser with me, and it's called AdvoCare. Now, they build champions through AdvoCare, and this is a company that the reason I uh, accepted them as sponsors and want to help sell their products is that they deal in nutrition and supplements that really teach you a little bit about keeping you healthy, how to eat, how to uh, what time to eat, what foods to eat, and, and then what supplements to use to maximize your health. So, for example, let's say you know you're dealing with a problem and you get some hemp oils. You want to stay healthy, and the only way you're going to stay healthy is through good nutritional management as well as supplement, you know, putting the right supplements in your body. There's so many companies out there selling supplements. Again, I look for the best ones I can find. And, you know, you look to the athletes, I think. Now, 28 of the 32 NFL teams have AdvoCare in their locker rooms. And uh, they build it, uh, they built their company uh, backed by science, the AdvoCare provides an innovative nutritional weight management and sports performance products that whether you're an athlete or not, you're going to really uh, enjoy these products. Now, they have a program called 180, and I'm starting on it right now, 180. And that means an 80-day program to get yourself, your gut into shape, to eat the right foods as well as take the right nutritional products. 
And uh, I recommend you call me at 619-375-122, uh, what's, what's the number, 1228, or email me at gregbeacon at gmail.com. That's greg, B-E-A-C-O-N dot com. And I can tell you about all these wonderful products from sports shakes to nutritional information and also how to get on their 180 program. Now, I have a website helping them out at advocare.com. And there's a couple numbers that you have to put in. So I'll put that up on a website, but it's 180-225-369. That's advocare.com, 180-225-369. Say Greg sent you. Buy the products there. Can get you a great discount. And also, if you want to become a, you want to make some extra money selling it, let me know and I can get you started doing that as well. That's Advocare. It's a great supplemental company that sells great nutritional products and I recommend you get on them. Okay, that's, uh, go to my website there or come to gregantonysjournal.wordpress.com and I'll have something up there where you can get involved as well. All right, let me get back, uh, quickly here to these programs before we take a break and we'll come back and uh, do some more. But in this, this show, Colony, they talk about the Red Hats, the Homeland Security people, along with this privileged class of elites that protect, they're protecting called the proxies, were all drawn by the hosts from the local population and are thus designated by some of those they control as collaborators. You know, it's unclear how the Red Hats were initially organized or equipped but they may be staffed by members of what was the Department of Homeland Security. But really, in this show, there's the ultimate martial law. Look what they're talking about here. The variables, which are a part of the show that make up the nature. This is colony, so when you're watching it, realize you're being programmed to, you know, programmed into what's going to happen in the future. It's extreme martial law on steroids. There's no travel between regions, so if you live in a region, you can't leave. Family members of the resistance are executed. Random checkpoints and frequent electronic identity check. No cars. Citizens must walk or ride bikes. Is that why you see all these bicycle lanes coming up? You know, I'm driving in San Diego, and they've taken a lane out of the traffic, and they put a bicycle lane in. Hmm. Slave labor camps. Propaganda centers, selective eugenics, most medical conditions such as diabetes are not deemed worthy of treatment by the hosts and people waste away as they often die agonizing deaths. This is what you're watching on TV. What else? Well, let me see if how much time before the break. Got about a minute and a half. But anyway, what else are they telling you here? They have these propaganda centers. Selective eugenics, most medical conditions, like I said, are ignored and people are dying in agonizing death. Hosts, the lead hosts, provide drones, brutally enforce laws, and execution is administered for minor infractions like jaywalking. Forced disappearances. One, diet and calorie restrictions are enforced. Coffee and liquor are extremely rare among the general population. No internet or cell phones are allowed, as they could be used to start a revolution. Oh, this would be a nightmare for millennials, wouldn't it? But anyway, I'll get back to a few more of those in a, right after this break. But anyway, crazy how we're being predictively uh, programmed, both in reality, which is actually a, a, a fiction they've created. That's Washington, D.C. And then anytime you turn on the tube, no matter if it's a cartoon show, something by Disney, or whether it's The Simpsons, or whether it's the shows that Fox, as well as CNN and TNT and all these movie program channels, they're just programming into what? A Vatican-led New World Order. Back in three minutes on The Investigative Journal. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. 
So without your help, these programs cannot continue on internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The following program is labeled dangerous and off limits by the supreme Jesuit command. But stand tall, people. Listen up, and you may just learn something. Okay, back for the second half hour of the Investigative Journal on this Monday. It's February 27th, 2018, day on our calendar, and we're going over predictive programming and how TV shows are getting you ready for the future in America and the world when the one world government comes to fruition. And boy, are they pulling out the stops. No, <laughs> they're doing everything now. Whether you watch the news, whether you watch Washington, it's all geared at getting you ready for the future. And we talked about the show The Colony is what we're discussing right now. There was two other shows we talked about in the first half hour. So if you missed that, go to my website at greganthonysjournal.wordpress.com and you can get a replay of this show, as well as shows going back a long time on the Vatican-led New World Order, information you won't get anywhere else. And don't forget to hit that donate button. We're listener sponsored and uh, we need your support because advertisers, you know, I do have a few that have come aboard, uh, in a very, you know, in a way that I, I picked certain companies that I thought would fit the show as well as the truth about good stuff that can help you help, uh, your health help. And in this half hour, I'll, bring another company on board to help business people get money. What do you need more than anything? Money. 
to stay in business, to fight these big corporate people that are out there. And I can show you a way to you can, if you have a small business, been in business for six months, I'll show you a way you can get some unsecured uh, loans and money to help you keep going. So let's get back to the colony. Diet and calorie restrictions are enforced on this show. They're going to tell you how to eat. Remember we say that on the show? They're going to control your mind, body, and soul. That's what they're doing right here. Can't have an internet. No cell phones. Oh, boy. Extreme electronic surveillance. It's going to be worse than it is now. Now, in Season 2, it was revealed that each block is, a slave, is not a slave labor colony, but eventually... All human beings will be made extinct. Depopulation agenda, correct? Now, the series begins less than a year after the beginning of the occupation. Life is living hell. The implied but never overtly stated is that the resistance is futile and always fatal to those who resist as well as to their family members. And maybe that's what they're telling us in Washington now with this last hurrah of the Trump campaign you know, the Trump presidency, saying, okay, we're going to bring nationalism, but it's going to be futile. It's never going to work because the globalists are stronger. And that's what we're hearing coming from Washington. The Republicans have gotten very little done, and maybe they're just trying to predictively program you and say, hey, look, as much as you love America, it's never going to be the same. Now, in the show, whether the alien invasion is real or it is false, it is a false flag, like we would expect to see. Remember Operation Bluebeam? Fake alien invasion designed to unify the planet, invoke extreme popula depopulation? It's not clear in this show. What is clear, that all of the government's martial law documents that we are familiar with on this show have previously exposed are played out in this TV show. Only these principles are on display in exaggerated form. Uh, now, it wouldn't surprise Mr. Hodges, who wrote an article on this, it wouldn't surprise him in the least if it turns out that the so-called alien invasion was faked by the globalists, accompanied by the rollout of their secret DARPA-produced technology with the goal of installing a brutal global governance and extreme depopulations as a final solution. You know, it's interesting to note, says Hodges, that the writers for this show have probably visited several independent media websites and borrowed their respective observations and revelations, combined them and produced this USA Network original series. From many Hollywood insiders, uh, there is no question that some of Hollywood's content could best be described as predictive programming. Uh, TV as a whole is complete garbage, folks. There have been only rare TV shows that have ever interested me because of, you know, uh, Mr. Hodges now chimes in and says, because of his familiarity with the East German Stasi and American martial law documents, there is compelling familiarity with the contents of this show. I have, you know, he has come to believe that this show is a blueprint for our collective futures and plays very much on the FEMA camp theme. Now, his conclusion is, all three of the aforementioned shows will be airing for their subsequent season premiere in the next three months. Colony will be entering its third season. The last ship will be, enter will be entering into seasons five and six, which will be combined. Designated Survivor will be entering its third season. To the audience, uh, ask uh, to send, uh, you know, go, hey, send me examples here at the Investigative Journal of predictive programming that you watch. And uh, I'd love to analyze it along with you on the show. But anyway, why don't we uh, look at, let's go back to, let's see, what was the first show we talked about here? We talked about The Last Ship. Now let's look there's a little video here on programming and what the last ship uh, really is all about. Let's see what he has to say. Okay, it's five minutes. Don't worry. It won't take forever. Hi, this is Dave Hodges of the Common Sense Show, and we're the show that's freeing America, one enslaved mind at a time. 
Well, I really enjoy The Last Ship, and I don't often get to watch it live, and I usually have to watch it bits and pieces through the week. You know, five minutes here, 12 minutes there, and eventually by the end of the week I manage to get myself through. Now why? Well, drama-wise, it's okay. It doesn't float my boat. I do enjoy the military discipline they show on the bridge of the ship called the Nathan James, because I grew up in a Navy family, and I saw that kind of discipline, and I think they capture the essence of good Navy discipline in the show. But that's not why I watch it. I watch it because of the predictive programming value. Now, if you're new to the concept of predictive programming, basically what we're talking about here is that the evil ones have to basically telegraph what they're going to do in some venue before they do it to you. And this has been a widely held belief, although not really, I would say it's been proven by research, but it's something that we have seen anecdotal evidence of through the ages. Even if it's not, it kind of shows you where the entertainment industry, where their mind is at and where they're going. When we go back to the early days of the last ship, they had a virus that was man-made that swept across the planet and killed 80% of the people on the planet. And then also some golden nuggets were the destabilization of the United States, the breaking up into little fiefdoms, you know, regions as opposed to a country, and there was a war fought over that. And it was really interesting how they progressed the arguments. Very, very skillfully done, and very much to the script of what many of us have written about through the years. Now, this most recent season, I have ambivalent feelings towards it. One, I thought the storyline absolutely sucked. I thought the acting was worse. The believability and the transition from one episode to the other left a lot to be desired. I think producer Michael Bay must have taken a lot of time off and delegated the directing to people who don't know what they're doing. But having said that, the predictive programming value of the show in these ten episodes carried out over an eight-week period I thought was pretty remarkable. They went from a virus-oriented world plague that was cured to now food would not grow. Seeds would not germinate. Crops would not come to maturity. And millions were starving. And as a subplot, another nugget of predictive programming came out where a mad scientist involved in all this actually had devised nutrients in food that would essentially turn one from a raging bull into a passive compliant sheep. I don't know if it's going to be in the food supply, but I can tell you electromagnetically that technology already exists. How thorough is it? How dependable is it? I don't know. I just know from the patents that people like Mick Nick Baggage have come up with, that that absolutely does exist. Project Harp is just one example. The last ship, predicting programming. Should, be we, should we be worried about pandemics? Should we be worried about the basic poisoning of crops so they don't grow? And the elite will be tucked away in underground bunkers with their nest safely supplied until the damage is done and then they can come up for air. It sounds paranoid, doesn't it? Maybe I should take my psychotropic medication. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want to go shoot up anybody. I know that's one of the known side effects of the black box warnings. As paranoid as it sounds, why do we keep seeing this kind of theme in Hollywood? It's interesting, isn't it? Well, that's it for the Common Sense Show. Thank you so much for joining us. We are brought to you by TradeGeniusAcademy.com. I love Trade Genius Academy. Because even though their special is over for reduced course price, what you're getting on the back end is far more valuable, potentially worth thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars to them. If you take the course, it's a seven-part course, you can finish it in three to four hours, which is a weekend, you will have access to online trading, and you'll be in the trading room with expert Bob Kudla and his associates, and he'll be able to watch what they do and imitate what he teaches about cryptocurrency, and that's what he's teaching. And cryptocurrency has now been accepted by J.P. Morgan because of their falling assets in that banking empire. And they're saying, well, I guess if you can't beat them, we better join them. 
Okay, I wanted to play a little bit on that uh, cryptocurrency because in the future we're going to be doing a number of shows on it. Is it good? Is it uh, worth it? Some say it's a scam. Some say it's the way to your next fortune. So we'll be getting to cryptocurrency. That's why I wanted to play a little bit of that uh, on the show. Okay, before we get back to uh, predictive programming, and I want to play another clip uh, regarding another show that we talked about earlier in the first uh, first half hour. And I will do that. But first, uh, another company has come aboard, and this will really help you guys who are in business. And if you're like me, I used to own a couple uh, Italian restaurants, and money is the key. Small business isn't easy in America anymore, and the banks aren't your friends anymore. So many small business and medium-sized uh, business owners have problems getting money. But I represent, and I want you to call me if you need money. Really, that's all we do is sell money at Mom and Pop Merchant Funding. Right. And you can call me, Greg Anthony, at uh, 619-375-1228 or Greg Beacon at gmail.com, and I'll give you all the info on how, if you're a business owner, and uh, they, you know, you, you may end up having to sell your company, and a few reasons is a lack of capital and financial difficulty. Now, mom and pop lends money fast. You can get it up to five days. You'll have your money. They rent, they go anywhere from 2500 to $1 million in five to seven days. It's unsecured, no personal guarantees. And you can contact me if you need unsecured working capital and you have a business that's been in business for six months. It's an easy process. You fill out an application. You show your bank statements and or your credit card statements for three months. And uh, we will get you the money here at Mom and Pop. That's what we're doing here on the Investigative Journal, helping you, the small business owner, stay in business and fight these large capital business companies, these large corporations that are just taking over. You know, how many people go out of business just because of Walmart and things like that? So if you want to stay in business, you're a medium-sized business, restaurant, floral shop, bar, a cannabis business, and you people that are in the cannabis business, whether it be the cannabis business uh, directly or whether you are a subsidiary company that sells fertilizer or other things, we can help you out at Mom and Pop Merchant Funding. Get a hold of me, Greg Anthony, here at the Investigative Journal at 619-375-1228, and we'll get you the money you need. What what better thing to sell than money, right? All right, let's get back to predictive now, earlier we talked about a show called The Colony, and I used a little bit of information from Dave Hodges, and I wanted to play a little clip he played about The Colony and predictive programming. Here we go. People often ask me, Dave, if Obama and Clinton get their way, the New World Order is able to overtake American society, what will life look like? And I always preface the answer by saying, well, you know, for those of us who survive, and you have to put that qualifier in there because you know it is their official doctrine. And we see it in statements like Ted Turner Audubon Magazine 20 years ago. And he said, we need a population reduction across the planet of 90% or greater. And we see that as a constant figure. Now, let's back away from that for a second and return to the original question. What will life be like? Well, for the 10% of us that they plan on letting survive, according to their documents, what will life be like? Well, I'm going to hearken you to a show that's on TV called Colony. And I actually stumbled upon this. And my wife and son had given me a gift. They got me Netflix and Amazon Prime. And I don't watch much TV. And I, I really don't. But I have to say that this show that has come out on USA Network and season one is on Amazon Prime called Colony really lays it out very quickly. I consider myself a bit of an expert when it comes to government documents on martial law, riot control, crowd control, FEMA camp detentions, methods of detentions, methods of execution. It's all laid out in government documents. I mean, nothing is left to the imagination. I don't have to extrapolate meaning or make my own inferences. It's all simply there. 
Well, the show Colony really encapsulates everything that I've read. And like I said, I consider myself to be a scholar of martial law and the New World Order. The show Colony on the backdrop, it's very interesting. The backdrop of the show is an alien invasion is somehow subjugated the Earth. But that's the only information you get. The aliens are superfluous to the entire series of shows. You have references to them now and then, but here's the backdrop of the show. The aliens have put humans in charge of humans, and they basically are told, if you don't do the job, you'll be exterminated. Uh, they destroy entire blocks. Now, a block would be a city that is walled off, people are detained, no travel is allowed, and this system is martial law on steroids. And again, people are going to say, Dave, what show are you talking about? And again, I'm talking about the show Colony. It is the most prophetic and accurate representation of martial law policies coming out of the Obama administration, particularly DHS and Army field manuals like FM 39.4. And this show has martial law with technology that we know exists, but we're actually seeing it applied on the movie screen. It's absolutely incredible to watch. Uh, they have a curfew at sundown and these big sirens that you can't miss play. And if you're out after curfew, a drone comes up to you and shoots you dead right on the spot. Food is severely regulated in this new society. Well, that's out of Obama's executive order 13603. It also showed up in a couple of Army field manual documents. So although President Trump may do away with Obama's executive orders, that is still on the books as far as procedure of controlling food. So luxuries uh, include things like coffee and tea, and alcohol is an exquisite luxury beyond what we would consider caviar today. And people basically live lower middle class styles. They are assigned jobs, and as long as they're productive and work beneficially to the state, they're allowed to keep living. They uh, could care less about human needs. There are no rights. There are no civil rights. It's all about the state. And the state, presumably, is the biggest employer. Now, they haven't said that on the show, but that seems to be the only growth industry I've seen in this society. Now, as someone with a background in psychology and sociology, it's interesting to me how the people are displaying things like learned helplessness, where basically people are beat down so long that they just give up and go along with the flow and don't rebel. And there also are mediums of protest where people join underground resistance effort at great risk to themselves and their family. See, in this, in this show, if you're caught being a subversive, they don't just kill you. They kill your entire family. And it's a pretty powerful incentive not to engage in these acts. Uh, a podcast like this would be an instant death penalty. In fact, I do not believe there's Internet. Uh, there are cell phones, but I don't believe that they allow Internet, no radio broadcasting, and like I said, justice is swift, harsh, and very, very unforgiving. And so people say to me, Dave, what would life be like under the Clinton administration had she been elected? This is what we would have eventually worked towards. This is what Obama has laid into place. This is how the deep state is conditioned. They have a room in the show, and it's a surveillance room. And it, it's like the inside of an arena been to a basketball or hockey game in an arena, you would see this massive row of computers, row after row after row, and analyst after analyst after analyst, and they're watching everything and everybody as much as possible, and they cover a lot of territory. Being a fugitive is an extreme challenge in this particular system, and what they have discovered, and here's the New World Order connection to this. They intercepted an alien message, one of the few alien references that you get in the show. And the message was decrypted, and it was a countdown from where the present population is to where there'll be zero population. And the countdown went down to two years and a few months from the present time of the show. So in other words, it wasn't just a labor colony. It was also a death camp. This reminds you of the German death camps where they'd bring the Jews in and they would have them work 
on World War II kinds of munitions and military projects while they systematically starve these people to death. Now, it doesn't say for sure that this is a um, starvation mode that they're going to enact, but clearly zero population and, and, and certainly depopulation is the goal, the ultimate goal, in this particular show. I highly recommend this show. I don't watch TV. I'll catch a glimpse of, like, designated survivor, get the theme, okay, got that, the last ship. I'll do the same thing. And I'm going to do an expose on some of these shows because I've actually gotten in and watched them and looked for New World Order themes. But I highly recommend Colony. If you want to know what we're fighting for, if you really want to understand how evil the New World Order is, how satanic, how devoid of human compassion that our rulers are, you watch this show for one episode and you'll see just how evil the establishment is. It's a good representation of what we lived under with Obama for eight years. If he'd had eight more, we'd be living the colony. If we lose this fight with our populist movement, if the deep state is able to prevail, we're going to see some of history's darkest moments inside this country. Okay, so Mr. Hodges still feels that there's hope in the world with the Trump populist movement. I would disagree. I think Trump was put there for one reason and one reason alone, to show you that you have no chance of this ever working. And while they keep America occupied with this problem in, in Washington of the populist nationalist agenda versus the globalists on the, on the left, they're moving the agenda towards globalism even farther. And in the end, it wouldn't have mattered whether Clinton or Obama or whoever's in there, they choose who is in office. So they chose to go this route to accelerate their one world order agenda, I believe. Back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, -S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's crossthebordered.org.